removable wings fitting standard garages, fuel consumption beating economy cars, takeoffs from city blocks, 10 revolutionary aircraft shattered every assumption about personal aviation, transforming weekend toys into genuine transportation that expanded life boundaries. How did private aircraft change pilot freedom forever? Picture this. Friday evening, you pull your aircraft wings off in 12 minutes flat, roll the fuselage into a standard garage next to your sedan, and Monday morning, you're airborne again, crossing three states before lunch. The Vans RV 12 IS shattered every assumption about aircraft ownership being reserved for those with airport hangers and deep pockets. This wasn't just another light sport entry. It was a declaration that personal aviation could fit into ordinary suburban life without compromise. Vans aircraft didn't set out to build the fastest machine or the flashiest showpiece when they launched this design. They asked a dangerous question. What if weekend pilots could own something as practical as their daily driver? The answer arrived with a 43-inch wide cabin, roomier than most cars, where two adults traveled in genuine comfort rather than tolerating cramped punishment. The Rotax 912 engine, sipping fuel at rates, making road trips look extravagant by comparison, turned 425 nautical mile journeys into casual Saturday adventures. Here's where numbers told stories. 100 horsepower pushed cruise speeds to 114 knots while burning roughly 5 gallons per hour, meaning a full 19.8 gallon tank delivered nearly 4 hours aloft with reserves intact. That translated to real freedom, departing Orlando at sunrise, touching down in Nashville for lunch, fuel stop in Kentucky, and home to Michigan before dinner all in one day. The 900 feet per minute climb rate made mountain crossings confident rather than terrifying. But the revolutionary moment wasn't in the numbers, it was in the Friday night ritual spreading across America. Pilots who'd spent decades renting tired trainers by the hour suddenly owned their freedom outright. The removable wing design meant no more monthly hangar rent devouring budgets. The aircraft lived at home, always ready, always available. Insurance companies noticed too, factory built quality from a kit reduced premiums compared to other home builds, while the Rotax's fuel injection eliminated carburetor ice anxiety. The RV-12 IS proved personal aviation didn't require compromise between practicality and performance between suburban life and sky access. It democratized cross-country flying the way Ford democratized automobiles a century prior. But what if you needed to land where pavement ended and wilderness began? While vans conquered suburbs and highways in the sky, another design was rewriting rules about where aircraft could actually go, turning limitations into invitations. 350 feet. That's a city block. And that's the distance between your front door and the neighbor three houses down. And that's all the Zenith C H750 cruiser needed to take off from a rocky Idaho mountain strip at 7,000 feet elevation on a summer afternoon. While other aircraft demanded thousands of feet of groomed pavement in perfect conditions, this utilitarian marvel was landing on riverbeds, mesa tops, and strips that barely qualified as suggestions. Chris Heinz designed the 750 with a philosophy bordering on defiance. Aircraft should go where pilots wanted, not where airports existed. Maximum gross weight held at 1,320 pounds, while a useful load pushed 540 pounds meaning two adults, camping gear, and fuel for exploration without apology. The high wing and sturdy landing gear weren't aesthetic choices. They were survival tools for the realities of backcountry operations, where one bad bounce could end expeditions permanently. The short takeoff and landing performance wasn't marketing exaggeration. It was engineered reality through massive flaps, optimized wing design, and refusal to prioritize speed over capability. 350-foot takeoff and landing distances without obstacles meant strips others avoided became routine operations. The Rotax engine options, typically the 912 producing 100 horsepower, delivered reliability in remote locations. The all-metal construction using 4130 steel tubing in critical areas provided durability against punishment. The moment of truth arrived on countless unmarked strips where pilots confronted their own limits before confronting the aircrafts. Engine roaring at full power, Controls responsive despite low airspeed, the 750 lifted off in distances that seemed impossible until you watched it happen repeatedly. Landing became the greater challenge. Drag from massive flaps scrubbed speed aggressively, forcing approaches steeper than conventional training taught. Pilots learned to trust the design, to embrace slow flight that felt wrong until experience proved perfectly right. The CH-750 Cruiser didn't just expand where pilots could fly, it redefined what qualified as a destination worth pursuing. Pavement became optional, crowds became avoidable, and adventure returned to personal aviation after decades of increasing standardization. Yet even this remarkable capability came with limitations. It was fundamentally American, designed for continental exploration. While Zenith conquered vertical space and rough terrain, another aircraft was preparing to conquer horizontal distance through aerodynamic refinement. 
A South African engineer stared at fuel gauges and did the math that would embarrass expensive factory planes. The Sling 2 from the airplane factory in Johannesburg turned conventional wisdom upside down. Why chase speed when efficiency could triple your world? 100 horsepower from a Rotax 912 IS engine sipped 6.2 gallons per hour at cruise while delivering 120 knots indicated airspeed. The number seemed modest until pilots calculated range. 750 nautical miles maximum meant departing Los Angeles and arriving in Denver without fuel stops. This wasn't accident. It was philosophy, engineered into every rivet of the all-metal airframe. 38-gallon fuel capacity combined with miserly consumption created six-hour endurance figures that redefined weekend trips. Fly from Seattle to San Francisco, spend Saturday exploring wine country, return Sunday evening with fuel remaining. The useful load allowed two adults, full fuel, and luggage without weight and balance gymnastics. Service ceiling topped 13,000 feet, making weather avoidance realistic and mountain crossings routine across Rockies or Drakensburg ranges with equal confidence. The side-by-side -side seating with automotive-style doors welcomed passengers who'd never flown in small aircraft, eliminating intimidation factors that kept potential pilots grounded. The Sling 2's true revolution emerged in operating costs that made flying cheaper than driving equivalent distances when fuel prices spiked. Pilots calculated six gallons per hour times current AV gas prices versus highway mileage in trucks averaging 15 miles per gallon. The aircraft won decisively, especially when time savings factored into equations. Cross-country trips that consumed entire weekends by car became Friday evening departures and Sunday afternoon returns. The South African upstart proved efficient long range. Touring didn't require American or European pedigrees or six-figure price tags. What happened when established manufacturers with decades of training aircraft experience decided to build something specifically for the new generation of sport pilots? The Diamond DA-20 Katana shocked industry veterans when fuel burn numbers arrived, 2.9 gallons per hour at maximum range crews. Veterans rechecked calculations, suspecting errors, but the Austrian engineers simply smiled. The 912 ISC-3 engine, spinning a composite propeller behind a sleek nose, delivered 122 knots true airspeed while consuming less fuel than lawnmowers. 703 nautical miles maximum range without reserves meant Phoenix to Seattle, Miami to New York, or Dallas to Denver became single leg journeys in an aircraft originally designed as primary trainer. Diamond had spent decades teaching student pilots and machines engineered to forgive mistakes and survive abuse. That institutional knowledge poured into the Katana's DNEA, benign stall characteristics, harmonized controls, and structural integrity that made instructors confident and students comfortable. 606 pounds useful load accommodated two adults, baggage, and full 22.2 gallons of usable fuel without complicated weight distribution puzzles. The composite construction delivered benefits beyond aesthetics. Smooth surfaces reduced drag, translating power into speed and range rather than fighting turbulence over rivets and seams. The revelation arrived during trips that redefined possible. Departing before dawn from Florida's east coast, breakfast in Bahamas, lunch in Cuba when restrictions lifted, fuel stop in Cayman Islands, and sunset arrival in Cozumel. Range and efficiency transformed Caribbean Island, hopping from expensive multi-day expeditions into extended weekend adventures. Pilots who'd resigned themselves to local flights within 100-mile radius suddenly planned routes, crossing time zones and international borders. Diamond demonstrated that European engineering discipline could create American range capability through efficiency rather than brute force. A small British kit manufacturer was taking efficiency even further, proving that lightweight construction and aerodynamic obsession could deliver performance-embarrassing aircraft costing five times more. British eccentricity met aerodynamic fanaticism in a Lincolnshire workshop, where Ivan Shaw refused accepting limitations others considered immutable. The Europa XS emerged from obsessive wind tunnel testing and ruthless weight reduction. 140 knots cruise from 80 horsepower. The numbers defied physics textbooks until pilots actually flew the composite marvel and discovered Shaw hadn't bent rules, but simply understood them better than competitors content with mediocrity. 18-gallon standard tanks delivered 731 nautical miles. Extended 28-gallon configuration pushed range beyond 1,000 nautical miles at economy settings. Kit builders assembling Europas discovered that achieving these numbers demanded precision and patience. The composite construction required skills beyond metal bashing, with mold layups and curing cycles replacing rivet guns and bucking bars, but completed aircraft rewarded meticulous construction with operating costs approaching motorcycle levels while delivering genuine cross-country capability. Departing Edinburgh at sunrise reached southern Spain before sunset. Flying from London to Rome consumed less fuel than driving equivalent distance in compact cars. The useful load exceeded 600 pounds in typical configurations, meaning two adults and baggage for extended tours without fuel capacity compromises. 
The Europa challenged fundamental assumptions about travel aircraft requirements. Speed merchants chasing astronauts through horsepower increases, paid penalties in fuel consumption, and engine complexity. The British approach inverted the equation. Extract maximum speed from minimum power through drag reduction and weight discipline. Insurance companies noticed premium stayed reasonable because the Rotax engines demonstrated remarkable reliability and the composite structures proved durable despite appearing delicate. Shaw's obsession with efficiency proved that small manufacturers could outperform industry giants when passion and engineering discipline aligned perfectly. Another manufacturer across Europe and Slovenia was exploring efficiency through entirely different lens, minimum fuel consumption at any speed. NASA engineers double-checked telemetry. Certain instruments had failed. The Pipistrel virus SW, crossing America in the Green Flight Challenge, was consuming fuel at rates that seemed impossible. 3.2 gallons per hour at cruise while maintaining 133 knots true airspeed. The Slovenian manufacturer hadn't just won the competition. They'd embarrassed every assumption about aircraft efficiency with numbers that rewrote textbooks. 850 nautical miles maximum range from the 912 IS variant meant crossing continents became routine operations for pilots who previously considered 100 mile hops ambitious. Ivo Boscarol built Pipistrel in a country barely visible on most maps, but his aircraft were conquering distance records and efficiency competitions worldwide. The virus represented decades of refinement pursuing single goal, extract maximum performance from minimum energy. Every surface was optimized through computational fluid dynamics and wind tunnel testing. Every component was evaluated for weight reduction without structural compromise. The retractable landing gear was first hint that Pipistrel refused accepting conventional light sport limitations. 545 feet takeoff ground roll meant operations for modest strips, while the glide ratio approaching sailplanes provided safety margins if engines quit. Cross-country pilots discovered the virus transformed travel economics fundamentally. Departing Seattle for San Diego consumed approximately 20 gallons total. The same trip in conventional 180 horsepower aircraft burned 60 gallons or more. Over hundreds of hours annually, fuel savings alone justified higher acquisition costs. But economics told partial story. The real revolution was psychological. Pilots stopped calculating fuel costs before launching trips, stopped worrying about prices at destination airports, stopped planning routes around cheapest fuel stops. Pipistrel proved that tiny nations and small companies could dominate through engineering excellence and unwavering focus. What happened when manufacturers prioritized cabin comfort and pilot experience over absolute performance numbers? Czech engineers at Bristol gathered pilot feedback and noticed a pattern. Cross-country flyers didn't complain about speed or range. They complained about arriving exhausted and sore. The NG5 Classic addressed this with radical simplicity. Build the widest cabin in the light sport category and make long flights comfortable rather than endurable. 49-inch cabin width exceeded many certified four-seat aircraft. Two adults sat shoulder to shoulder without touching, without the claustrophobic intimacy that turned four-hour flights into relationship stress tests. 109 knots crews seemed modest until pilots calculated. Comfort mattered more than extra knots when distances stretched beyond 300 miles. 405 nautical miles typical range transformed weekend possibilities. Departing Chicago, Friday evening reached Gulf Coast beaches before sunset. Returning Sunday afternoon arrived home with daylight remaining and energy from Monday morning meetings. The useful load exceeding 600 pounds in common configurations meant full fuel. Two adults, camping gear and golf clubs, traveled together without weight and balance compromises, forcing difficult choices. 688 feet takeoff distance and 492 feet landing distance without obstacles. Opened access to airports others avoided, bringing aircraft closer to actual destinations rather than forcing ground transportation, adding hours to journeys. Pilots discovered that the wide cabin transformed passenger acceptance dramatically. Spouses who tolerated narrow trainers for introductory flights actually volunteered for cross-country trips in the Bristol. The reduced fatigue meant arriving refreshed rather than exhausted, ready to enjoy destinations, rather than collapsing in hotel rooms, recovering from hours, fighting uncomfortable seating and noise. The stability in crews reduced pilot workload. Trimmed properly, the classic tracked straight without constant control pressure. Bristol proved that cabin comfort wasn't luxury, but necessity for making personal aircraft practical travel tools rather than weekend toys. Mediterranean design sensibility met modern composite construction, proving that thoughtful detail design could make even modest performance feel premium when execution quality exceeded expectations. Italian designers at Technum understood something competitors missed. Travel aircraft needed to feel special from the moment pilots opened the doors. The P-2008 JC Mark II combined composite fuselage with metal wings and hybrid construction that delivered both efficiency and manufacturing practicality. The Garmin G3X touch panel dominated the instrument layout. 
providing capabilities previously reserved for six-figure aircraft in a package costing fraction of certified equivalents. 120 knots cruise and 703 nautical miles range turned the Technam into a serious cross-country machine, despite light sport classification. 551 pounds useful load with 1,433 pounds. Maximum takeoff weight meant two adults and full fuel with baggage space remaining for extended trips. Cross-country operations revealed the Technam's genius. It was fast enough to cover ground efficiently, but slow enough to avoid consuming fuel stupidly. The sweet spot cruise settings balanced speed and economy, letting pilots choose mission-appropriate performance. The Rotax 912 S2 engine with electronic fuel injection and full authority digital engine control eliminated mixture management completely. Pilots set power and the computer optimized fuel delivery for altitude, temperature, and atmospheric conditions automatically. Technam demonstrated that thoughtful design integration mattered as much as individual component performance. One Eastern European company was preparing aircraft for operations where infrastructure barely existed, proving aerodynamic efficiency could be optimized for entirely different mission profiles. Ukrainian engineers at Aeropract asked a question competitors ignored. What if extreme fuel efficiency mattered more than maximum speed? The A32 Vixen emerged from aerodynamic optimization that bordered on obsession, delivering 113 knots typical cruise while sipping 4.6 gallons per hour. But the revelation arrived at reduced power settings. 2.9 gallons per hour at 87 knots meant endurance stretching beyond comprehension. Pilots calculated range figures, rechecked math, and realized they were looking at aircraft capable of flying from New York to Minneapolis on single tank without reserves anxiety. The Rotax 912 IS engine eliminated constant pilot workload of leaning and monitoring that turned long flights into exhausting exercises. Operating costs approached motorcycle territory when calculated honestly. Insurance premiums stayed reasonable, maintenance demands remained modest, and the fuel consumption figures meant annual operating budgets that welcomed pilots flying frequently rather than rationing hours trying to stretch budgets across entire years. The efficiency wasn't just economic, it was operational freedom from fuel anxiety that constrained thinking and limited ambitions. Pilots stopped planning routes around fuel stops and started planning routes around destinations worth visiting. The Ukrainian achievement proved that small nations and modest manufacturers could compete globally when engineering focus remained sharp and priorities stayed clear. But one final frontier remained unconquered in personal aviation. True amphibious capability allowing operations from both conventional runways and water surfaces. Brazilian engineers at Skoda Aeronautica confronted reality that defeated most competitors. Designing genuine amphibious aircraft demanded solving problems that couldn't be approximated or simplified. The Super Petrol LS, with its Rotax 912 IS producing 100 horsepower, or 914 UL, delivering 115 horsepower, operated equally confidently from paved runways, grass strips, rivers, lakes, and coastal waters. 100 knots cruise from the 912 or 110 knots from the 914 seemed modest until pilots calculated freedom. Every body of water became potential destination, every coastline became exploration opportunity, and every river became highway requiring no infrastructure or permission beyond regulations. 262 feet ground roll and 394 feet water takeoff distance with the 912 IIS meant operations from confined spaces where conventional seaplanes required extensive room in perfect conditions. The amphibious flexibility revolutionized how pilots thought about destinations and route planning completely. Conventional aircraft forced compromises, avoid coastal areas, bypass islands, plan around airport locations regardless of actual destination desirability. The Super Petrol inverted those limitations. Airports became optional rather than mandatory. Coastlines became attractions rather than obstacles. And weather planning incorporated water landings as valid alternatives when conventional strips became unavailable due to crosswinds or visibility restrictions. The Brazilian achievement demonstrated that amphibious operations could be democratized and made accessible to sport pilots without requiring commercial licenses, complex ratings, or six-figure aircraft investments that kept water flying exclusive to wealthy enthusiasts. These machines proved freedom isn't purchased through speed, but through efficiency, versatility, and refusing limitations, others accepted. Which capability transformed your perspective most? Smash that like button and let us know. Drop comments sharing your dream cross-country route. Hit subscribe so you never miss aviation stories rewriting what's possible. Share this with pilots who stop dreaming and need reminding that revolution happened while they weren't watching. Watch the videos appearing on your screen and continue with us. Bye-bye.